Welcome. This is 8.2 uh, exponential functions and average rate of change. So exponential functions, um, you covered that before, so a lot of this will just be a review. Average rate of change, um, maybe not so much, but either way, we're going to go over all this information, and if you have any questions, please let me know. So first thing, it says, give an example of an equation that has a constant rate of change. Give an example as a graph and an equation. So something that has a constant rate of change would be something like, another word for constant rate of change would be the same as constant slope. So something like y equals mx plus b. A graph could be something like that. All right. Um, and then give an example of an equation that does not have a constant rate of change, um, like a quadratic. So here we have, on this part, on the left side, it has negative slope, and then at the middle, it becomes a uh, zero slope, and then we have a positive slope. So it constantly changes as it goes um, in the domain from negative infinity to infinity. The slope is always changing. Um, so an equation could be something like, let's see, let's do this problem. It would be something like y equals um, a is 1, and then we could do x. That's our vertex right here. It would be um, 1 comma 0, so it would be something like x uh, minus 1 squared, something like that could be um, a quadratic. Okay. There could be others like absolute value functions that make a V, something like that, would have a, um, a not, would not have a constant rate of change. Um, like for the right side of the vertex, or the absolute value function, it would have constant rate of change, but um, if you did it from like here to here, um, the slope is gonna be negative and then it's gonna be positive, so it's not gonna be constant. Um, and you could probably come up with lots of other ones. We talked about uh, exponential functions. I guess that's what we're covering today. Um, something like that would also be, I would not have a constant rate of change. All right? So, um, because not all equations have constant rate of change, we have to look, um, we'll have to take a look and see, or to, bleh, to look at what we call the average rate of change. This looks at the rate of change of a function over a specific interval. So like, if we only wanted to look at the average rate of change between this, between here and here, that would be our interval, okay? These intervals refer to the x-axis. So say this was, I don't know, like the y-axis, it could maybe go an interval from negative one to maybe this is 2, something like that. And we would write it like this, negative 1 to 2. Okay, we'd use brackets because it would include those points. Okay, so average rate of change formula. So to do the average rate of change, of change formula, we have to know the interval. So we'll have in our interval will be something like A to B. Okay, so like the average rate of change between uh, from A to B, and then we'd use our formula, which would be F of B minus F of A, where F of B was just an evaluating that function when X is B, and we do B minus A. Another way to write that is Y2 minus Y1 um, over X2 minus X1. Where x, where x1 and y1 is one point, and x2 comma y2 is the other point. So like here we kind of talked about, here was one point, something like that. We would just want to find the average rate of change between those points. So this, what's on the top is the difference, the difference between the y's, that's called the rise. And the difference between the x's gives you the run. All right? So just remember that, that that's the same as rise over run. Okay? So let's just do an example here. Like, say, what if I wanted to find the average rate of change
between the interval uh, from 0 to um, 3. Okay. So if I gave you a graph, all you would really need to do would be find, this would be our, our point at 0, y would be 1, and when x equals 3, you get uh, 4. And then we'd use our rise over run. So we wouldn't have to use the formula. We could just say, well, we go up 3 and we go over 3. And it would have an average rate of change of 3 over 3, which would give us 1. So let's try another example with a different interval. So let's change that interval to maybe negative 1 to, to 0. I don't know. Let's see how that turns out. So this would be negative 1 would give us 4. So this would be negative 1 comma 4. And then if we did 0, we've got um, 0 comma 1. And you could just use the formula, or you could just do rise over run, which would go down 3 over 1. So ne negative 3 over 1, which just gives you a slope of negative 3. All right, let's try one more like that. It'll become some like that on the homework, so I didn't spend a whole lot of time on this, so I kind of added this one. All right, say we wanted to have an interval from 0 to 2. Let's see what that looks like. So here we'd find 0 would give us 0, 1. Here we'd get 2, 0. Oops. 2, 1. Okay. And then we'd do rise over run. Well, we would be no rise a zero rise, and a run of two, so zero over two, which gives us a slope of zero. So um, just because a function has lots of different uh, slopes, like the slope at zero is not the same as like the slope between when x is zero and one. I don't know if that makes any sense, but that's how you can do it with a graph. So Worst case scenario, you could always kind of draw a picture of a graph and try and figure it up that way. Although I feel like a lot of times um, that probably would take more time to be able to do it than just using the formula. Okay? All right. So let's see. I think we pretty much covered everything else. Let's do, let's do one more really quick. So say what if it was from 1. We did this before. 1 to 3. Okay, so we'd start at 1, gives you 0, so 1, comma, 0. And then we'd have 1 at 3 would be 3, comma, uh, 4. And then we could just do our rise over run. So it would be 4 over 2, which gives you an average rate of change of 2. Okay? Okay. So... Filled that in, okay? Again, if you're doing it with a graph, it's really, I mean, either way, you're just doing the rise over the run, okay? So here's a problem they want us to do. Find the average rate of change for this function um, over this interval from negative 2 to 3, okay? So I have steps here. If you want to pause and write those down, you're welcome to. Um, but I'm just going to keep going with the problem, okay? All right, well, here, let me just zoom in in case you want to pause. Just like that. Okay. So, anyways, this is, this is what we're going to do. We're going to write down the x1 and x2. So, our interval is our x values. So, x1 would be negative 2. x2 would be 3. Okay. The next step is to substitute those x's into the function. So, we'd get y1. It would be the one that corresponds to x1, would give us uh, negative 2 squared. Make sure you put that in a parenthesis. Minus 2 times negative 2 plus 1. That gives us 4 plus 4 plus 1 gives you 9. And then we do the same with y2. So y2, x2 would be 3. So 3 squared minus 2 times 3 plus 1 equals 9 minus 6 plus 1 gives us 4. So now we have x1, y1, x2, y2. 
Those are just the points, kind of like we did for this. This could be this could be our that could be our x1 and y1. This could be our x2, y2. And then we'll just plug it into our formula. So this is the one we're going to want to use. It is y2 minus y1. So 4 minus 9 over and then x2 minus x1. So 3 minus a negative 2. So make sure if it's negative, it's going to um, have like a double negative, make it be positive. So that ends up giving us negative 5 over 5, which is negative 1. So the average rate of change between those two points, between that interval from negative 2 to 3, the average rate of change is 1. Okay, so we could kind of do the same thing we did with this one. We could do y2 minus y1, so maybe if this is going to be our x, uh, this doesn't really, and it really doesn't matter. We could say this would be x1, y1, and over here that could be our x2, y2. So let's see what we end up getting. So if we did y2, that's 0, and y1 is 4, so minus 4, over x2, which is 1, minus uh, y, y1, which is 3. So end up getting negative, oops, negative 4 over um, negative 2, which ends up giving us 2. So we end up getting the same thing. All right. Okay, so I'd like you to pause and try and do these three. Um, but we'll go over that afterwards. So, <clears throat> all right, so hopefully you did that. Um, first thing, y equals, this is y equals mx plus b. This is a linear equation, which means that it has a constant rate of change. So here, this is the slope, no matter what the interval. So you're welcome to have, maybe perhaps you did, um, did the problem. And we could go over and prove that it's the same. So here we could say x1, and this could be x2. So x1 is equal to negative 1. x2 is 6. So we plug that in to get us our y1. would be 5 times negative 1 minus 4. It gives you negative 9. And then y2, 5 times 6 minus 4. That ends up giving us 26, I think. Okay. And then we'd use our function. So y2, which is 26, minus y1, all over x2, minus x1. So it ends up giving us um, 35 over 7, which is 5. Which is the same thing that we circled or boxed over here. Okay, so just a reminder, uh, linear equation, you don't need to do the formula for, for the average rate of change. You can just pick it right out. Okay, but here's a quadratic, so it does not have a constant rate of change. So I would label maybe x1 will be 2 and x2 can be 5. All right, and again, it doesn't really matter as long as when you, when you come up and say x1, Make sure you have y1 that corresponds to that. So we plug that in. We get negative 2 squared plus 5. And that gives us a negative 4 plus 5, which is 1. So remember, this exponent is only applying to what's touching. So that negative is not being squared. And then we do y2 is negative 5 squared plus 5. So that gives you negative 25 plus 5, which is negative 20. So then we'll do y2 minus y1 minus 20 minus 1 all over x2 minus x1, 5 minus 2. That gives you negative 21 over 3, which gives you 7, negative 7. Okay. And then the last one, we have an absolute value function. So again, we got to just say x1 is negative 8, and x2 is going to be negative 4. We'll do y1 is equal to, so 
we'll have two absolute values of negative 8 plus 7 plus 3. So remember, we need to evaluate what's inside before we absolute anything. So that would give us two absolute value of negative 1 plus 3, which gives you 2 times 1 plus 3 equals 5. Okay, and we'll do the same with y2. So 2 times absolute value of negative 4 plus 7 plus 3. That gives you 2 times the absolute value of 3 plus 3, which gives you 6 plus 3, which is 9. So here we're going to do y2 minus y1, so 9 minus 5 over um, y x2 minus x1, so negative 4 minus a negative 8. Ends up giving you 4 over, and negative 4 plus 8 will give you 4. So we get average rate of change of 1. Okay? So if you have any questions, please let me know. Again, this is probably like the new stuff. All right, so now we're also going to talk about uh, exponential functions. So my understanding is that you've learned this, whether last year or the year before, um, so hopefully this will come back to you quickly. So what is the difference um, about any... Oh, ha, what, what is different about the exponential function? So you could say something like um, where we have our variable is an exponent. Okay, we haven't had any of those before. So here we have y. The This is like the form for... Uh, exponential function y equals a times b to the x where this is our variable okay a is the initial value so if you said x was zero like oftentimes x is time like if you put money into a bank um, a would be your initial value if time was zero b to the zero would give you one and it would end up just getting a so y would be equal to a and that's our initial value um, it's also the y-intercept. And b is the growth or decay factor. Okay, so what's being multiplied every single time? Whether it be um, 2 or 1 half. We'll come up and do some of those examples. Um, we can have equations that either represent exponential growth or decay. Let's see what happens when we graph. All right, so let's look at this. Right here we have f of x is equal to 2 to the x. And f of x is just another way. It's the same as y equals. It's just telling us that that's our variable. x is our variable, and it's what we're going to um, evaluate. Okay, we're going to evaluate the function at x. It could be 2 or 5 or whatever. Okay, so here let's fill this in. So what is a? What's the initial value? Okay, I have a lot of people guess and say zero, um, or they're just not sure. Um, so we, again, you can always figure that out by doing x to the zero, and that would give you two to the zero, which is just one. Okay. Um, really, a the thing that's in front of b would be like that, except we wouldn't write that down because it doesn't change the the equation. So usually we don't write that down. B is going to be 2. All right. So let's fill in this table. If you recall, so at x equals negative 2, we've got 2 to the negative 2. And again, if we have negative exponents, we can rewrite that as 1 over 2 to the positive 2. So negative exponents, you just bring it down and change its sign. And that gives us 1 fourth. Or you can just do it on your calculator. And then next we would have 1 half and then 1, and then 2, 4, 6, nope, not 6, 8, and 16. Okay, so every time it's just being multiplied by 2, and that's what, that's what the growth or decay factor does. It's being multiplied every single time. So here, let's graph that a bit. So we've got 1 fourth, and we've got um, half, and 1, 4, 6, so we have something kind of like that. Okay? And this is called exponential growth. 
this example is where we have d, b is 1 half. a is still 1. So every time it's going to be multiplied by a half. So if we do this, do similarly, or you can just do it on your calculator here, we'd end up getting um, 4, 2, 1, 1 half, 1 fourth, 1 eighth, and 1 sixteenth. So here would be at 4, and then 2, and then 1 half, fourth, uh, eighth, and sixteenth, something like that. And you connect those dots. Something like that. I wasn't the best, but okay. So this is called uh, exponential decay. So as time goes on, it gets closer and closer to zero. It never gets to zero, but it keeps closer and closer to zero. All right, so growth factor. So growth factor, again, a factor is just what's being multiplied every single time. So it's growth, and you may recall this, that it's growth if B is greater than 1, and it's decay if B is less than 1. All right? And if B was equal to 1, then it wouldn't be growth or decay. It would just, your initial value would stay straight across like that. Okay? We'd never grow or decay. So let's answer some of these questions. Determine the initial value and the growth or decay factor. So here, these are our initial values. The easiest one to pick out. Um, so initial value would be 60. Here, initial value would be 23. Initial value here would be 525. One thing that you may get caught up is if you like what we just talked about here. So what would be the what would be the initial value here? Well, this would just be 1. We don't see it, but that's what it would be, okay? All right, and then we need to talk about growth or decay. So is A growth or decay? Well, since 1.41 is greater than 1, it's growth. And the growth factor would be 1.41. Here we've got less than 1, so it would be decay factor of 0 0.67, and then C would also be decay, decay factor of 0 0.86. All right. Another way to think about the growth or decay factor is to ask yourself what each value is being multiplied each time. So look at these tables. I'd like to see if you can come up with the growth or decay factor. So. I'll just pause for a second and let you to think about that or work on that on your notes. All right, so again, growth or decay factor is just what's being multiplied every single time. So what do you need to multiply 0.11 to get 0.33? Well, you need to multiply it by 3. And make sure it works for every one. So if you multiply 0.33, going forever, by 3, it will give you 1. I guess, yeah, we should put those bars on top of it telling us that it keeps going. And then again, if we multiply 1 times 3, oops, <laughs> multiply 1 times 3 gives you 3, 3 times 3 gives you 9, 9 times 3 gives you 27. So here we'd have growth factor of 3. Okay? Another thing that's kind of interesting is, again, if, if x is 0, all you have is your initial value. So if we wanted to write that down too, initial value here would be 1. And then hopefully you did this kind of the same thing. So what do you need to multiply uh, 52 by to get 8? Okay. So basically, if you went 8 divided by um, 32, well, that gives you 1 fourth. Okay. If you multiply 8 by 1 fourth, that gives you 2. So every time... Oops, I did a two. <laughs> One fourth every time. That gives you your um, decay. This one's going down. Decay rate, no, decay factor would be one fourth. Okay, and we can again, you can find your initial value. Um, initial value would be two. Okay, so again, you can always just do. Um, 
do like 8 divided by 32, or you could do 0.33 divided by 0.11. Just divide the first by the last. And that would give you your growth or decay factor as well. Okay? All right. Okay, and let's talk about growth or decay rate. I accidentally said that just barely. All right. <clears throat> so, again, try and, try and remember not to get those mixed up with the factor. Factor is what's being multiplied every time. And the rate is the percent change between each uh, output value of the function. Okay? So let's talk about these. So I have some growth rates and some decay rates, and I have the functions that correspond. I want to have you look at that and see if you can come up with the growth rate and the decay rate, or what is, like, how do we come up with that? Okay, so pause. Boop. All right, so here we are. Hopefully you looked at that. Um, 23 and 23, there's some sort of relationship there. Okay, again, we have 64 and 64. Okay. Um, the thing is we have a 1 in front of that. So um, to come up with the growth rate, it's always going to be B minus 1. Okay. And that would give you 0.23. And then we need to multiply it by 100 to get a percentage. So growth rate is B minus 1 times 100. Okay, perhaps easier way just to think about it is just say, what is the difference between B and 1? Okay, so if you did the difference between this and this, or I mean this and 1, well, we'd have 0.23 and just write it as a percentage. Okay, same thing here. The difference of 1.62 and 1 gives you 0.64. Sorry, did I say 2? Uh, gives you 0.64. And then we just need to write it as a percentage. So that would give us 64%. We're going to kind of do the same sort of thing. Um, so the difference of 3 fourths and 1 gives you 1 fourth, which is 0.25. And then we need to write it as a percentage. Okay. Here again, the difference between this and 1 would give us 0.61. And then write it as a percentage. So if you wanted to write down the formula for decay rate, it's 1 minus b times 100. Okay, so if we did that, um, like 1 minus 0.75, this is 0.75, um, that gives you 0.25, and then we'd multiply it by 100, that would give us the 25%. Okay? But again, I feel like in some ways it's just easier to look at the B value and say, what's the difference between that and 1? Um, and it will always be positive. It should always be positive. Percentage will always be positive. And then we'll just write it as a percentage. Okay, So maybe we'll do it kind of like that. So identify the initial value, growth or decay factor, and the growth and decay rate for each below. Okay, so... Uh, um, Let's just write down all the initial values. Here would be 4. Here the initial value would be 5. Initial value 0 0.5. Initial value of 1.5. Initial value of 3. And initial value of 2. Okay. And then let's look at these. Is this growth or decay? Well, this is decay. So decay factor is 0 0.78, 0 0.78, and then the decay rate is going to be the difference between this and 1, which ends up giving us 0 0.22, and then we want to write it as a percentage, so 22%. This would be growth, growth rate, or growth factor, sorry, is 1.47, and we'd want to find the growth rate, which is just this and the difference between this and 1, which would be 0.47, and then we'll write it as a percentage. Okay, this would also be growth factor of 1.19, and the growth rate would be 19%. 
So pause and see if you can do D, E, and F. All right, so here we've got decay factor of 0 0.36 and decay rate. Again, it's just the difference between this and 1. So you could do 1 minus 0 0.36. And that gives you 6, 0.64. So we'd have 64%. All right, here we've got, um, is this growth or decay? This is decay, it's less than one. You could write this as a decimal, 0 0.4. So decay factor is point, or 0 0.4. And then we wanna write it as a decay rate. So the difference between this and 1 is 0.6 or 60%. And then here, um, this is growth that's greater than 1. So we'll have growth factor of 2. And the growth rate is the difference between this and 1, which is 1. So, and we multiply it by 100, give you 100% growth. All right, so I think everything we've covered so far, you've done before. Just this part, I think, is new. Okay, so the only difference is that we have exponents, or not exponents, um, coefficients in our exponents. Okay, but we know the rule. Um, if we have something like um, x to the a time to the b, like a power to a power, that's what gave us x to the a times b. So we're just basically going to do the opposite. We're going to make it become a power to a power. And we're just going to evaluate that part. So I think that gives you 1.22, uh, if I recall correctly. And then we we'll just say, well, we have growth. Uh, well, our initial value here would be 1. Um, growth factor would be 1.22, and the growth rate is 22%. I think that's right. Let me get my calculator really quick. Okay, so we do 1.05 to the, and you can use like a carrot um, to the 4. Yep, so that gives you 1.2155, so round up to... 1.22, okay? So this is probably one of the most common mistakes is people just, I mean, these are go pretty quick, pretty quick, pretty quick um, for like these ones, okay? And oftentimes, I mean, they're not gonna have them separated what type of exponential function, like having these types and these types, those be all mixed in. So I have lots of students that just kind of are just going on, just going quick, and they don't even realize that there is a coefficient in the exponent. So make sure you be cautious and make sure you take care of that. So here's another one. Um, this um, initial value, again, initial value would be 1. And, I mean, just looking at it, this will, I mean, even after we use the exponent to the, the third, it's still going to be um, um, decay. So we're going to give us a decay factor and a decay rate. We just need to figure out what those are. So get your calculator and you need to do point, <coughs> sorry, 0 0.68 to the third. And that gives you 0 0.31. And then that gives us our factor. And we want to find the difference of that in 1. So um, you can even just do a subtract 1. It will give you a negative, but you just need to realize that um, the factor is always going to be positive. So just you should never have negative any of these types of problems. Okay, so that gives us 60, um, round up 69%. Okay. And then here again, we do the sort of same sort of thing. Initial value here is 1. Um, this is going to be growth factor and growth rate because this is greater than 1. So 1.46 to the third. That gives us 3.11. 
and then we'd need to write it as a um, rate. So we'll do the difference of 3.11 and 1. That gives us 2.11, and then we'll write it as a percentage, so 211% growth. All right, so again, if you have any questions, please let me know. Here we've got some word problems. Um, again, always we're going to have y equals a times b to the x. So we just need to really figure out what a is, what b is, and what x is. So um, I think I'm gonna, I think I rewrote this, but anyways, basically, um, this person started with a hundred dollars in their account. All right, that would be your initial value, um, and it has an average rate of change or ad, average rate of 4%. So remember this is a rate. B always is a factor. So we're going to need to switch that into a factor. And it says the money le or let and the money left in the account. See again this doesn't make much any sense, okay? Basically you put $100 has a rate of 4% and it's left there for 12 years. We want to see how much it's worth. Okay? So here we have our initial value, which is $100, okay? And we need to find the factor, B is a factor. And they give us the rate. All right. So, I mean, you can use our formula that was like um, growth rate is equal to... Um, B minus 1 times 100, okay? So you could do that. You could do 4% um, is equal to B minus 1 times 100, and we'll divide both sides by 100, and that gives us 0 0.04 is equal to B minus 1, and then we need to add 1 to both sides, and that gives us 1.04 equals B, okay? So that's one way you could do it. 1.04 um, to the x, okay? Or I think perhaps the easier way is just to move the decimal twice, which is basically what we did in this step by dividing it by 100, okay? So that gives us 0 0.04. And then we're just going to, if it's growth, we're going to add one. If it's decay, we'll take, a, we'll subtract one. So here we would add one to it to give you 1.04. And then to the how many years was 12 years, so we'll do x is going to be 12. Again, x will usually be time um, for most situations. Okay? And then we just need to evaluate that. So get your calculator out, do 100, oops, 100 times 1.04 to the twelfth, and that gives you about 160, 160 bucks when you round. Okay? So I'd like you to try and see if you can do 9 and 10. All right, so it says in 1985 there were 285 cell phone subscribers in a small town of Centerville. The number of subscribers increased by 75% per year after 1985. How many cell phone subscribers were in Centerville in 1994? Okay, so again, we need to figure out what is the initial value. Okay, so since our initial time was 1985, we're going to use 285. Okay, we need to find B, which is the factor, but they give us the rate. So again, we can you either use the formula that we wrote down, or you can move the decimal over twice. And since it's growth, we're going to add one to it. So that gives us 1.75. And then x is how many years after it started. So it started in 85, and we want to check it at 94. So that would be 9 years. So 285 times 1.75 to the 9. Okay, so that means that now we have 
43,871 subscribers in nine years. Okay. It says, each year the local country club sponsors a tennis tournament. Play starts at 128 participants. During each round, half of the players are eliminated. So if you lose, then you're out. Um, how many players remain after five rounds? So again, we need to come up with our initial value, which here would be 128. And we need to find the growth. So our decay, this time we're, we're losing players. So it'd be decay. If you want to find the decay factor. Well, I don't see any percentages. So that means the information that they give us is the factor. Okay, rates are always percentages. So it says, um, during each round, half of the participants are eliminated. So half, we're going to lose half of our participants every, every round. Okay, and then it says, put a parenthesis in there, and we want to know after five rounds. So that would be our time. Okay. So I plug that in our calculator. So in this situation, we didn't even have to switch it into factor. I mean, a, a growth factor, because it was already in that form. So we'll do 120 times 1 half, or 0.5 to the 5. And that gives us with four players left. So semifinals. Okay? So if you have any questions, let me know. I'd um, love to help you out. I think there's like six of the word problems on your homework. Um, so make sure you feel comfortable with that. And again, please be careful when we have coefficients in the exponents. Okay? After that, I think you'll be pretty, pretty great. And it's, again, also one other thing is it's always the difference from one. So um, whether it be uh, growth, the difference of that in one would be point. Or seven or forty-seven percent, or if it's decay like D, one minus point three six, that gives you the point six four, or sixty-four percent, and that's pretty much it. All right, we'll see ya.